down here at this end of the table, we do have a younger spectrum and and the wisdom and and trust me, I know which end of the spectrum I'd be on. I'd be at that end, but no wisdom, so they gotta come sit up here. So. Emily, uh, 31 years old, been here for one year. Um, I asked I asked all of our panelists some uh, certain questions, and one of the questions I asked them was, "What do you do most every day that affects your business? What is it you do that makes you successful and makes you who you are?" And one of the things Emily said, and I'd like you to elaborate on this a little bit is that she outsources her weakness. What do you mean by that? Um, well, I'm dyslexic, so I'm terrible at accounting, so I have an accountant. Um, I also have someone part-time that helps me with mailing lists. So anything that I'm really not good at, I try and outsource to someone else. Because the amount of time that it takes me to do that, I could be doing the things that I'm really good at and making more money. So it costs me less in the short term to pay someone else to do those things. Excellent, excellent, yeah, and that's great. something, and that is why I have 10 staff members, because I'm not good at anything, so, <laughs> so I just got a lot of good people around me and, and said, would you guys do all the work? And so, um, I guess I Dad is raising your hand. <laughs> I am, you outsource me. I outsource my wife. <laughs> I don't, I don't know, I don't know any top agent who doesn't outsource everything they have available and doesn't use everyone they have available to outsource. Um, you know, we work together. Um, now, hopefully, you put yourselves in win-win positions with the people you're asking to help you. Hopefully, you're helping them equally so that they are winning propositions. So some other things I'd like to mention about Emily is her experience in her marketing and networking. Okay, so Emily is an ABR. She has a at home with diversity certification, and she completed an additional 73 hours of CE in her last renewal period. That's that's pretty impressive. That's what is that? That is honing her job skills. So she is continually learning. Very important in this business. Um, we may think we know it all. We don't know anything. And there's a lot to learn. And a lot of times when you go to these learning type events, we're just reminded of things we know we need to do and we uh, work better at them. She's also a networker. So what clubs are you a member of? Um, I'm on the board of the Flagler County Young Professionals Group, and I'm the head of the marketing, on the marketing chair. Um, and formerly, I was on the board of Kiwanis, and I was also on the last HOA board of uh, Village Drive, where I used to live. So. Awesome. And you did the City of Palm Coast Citizens Academy? Yeah. Awesome. So, involvement. That, that, has that been a, instrumental in your successes? <clears throat> Yeah, you get to meet people that you didn't think you would ever get to know. And I mean, most of my business is done based on personal relationships more than marketing to the masses. I find that I do better in front of people, so it really is a great way to meet new people and build that connection. Awesome. Thank you, Emily. Can we give Emily a round of applause? <laughs> so I'm, I'm just going to let them have the mic. So, Carrie, Carrie Craig, how long have you been with us? Since July of last year. Since July of last year. Almost a year. Almost a year. So, awesome. Um, I love, in, in Carrie's response, I picked out three words. And these, like, really do emphasize and, and, and tell a story about her. And it's, I take action. I take action. So she's a doer. So tell us the kinds of things you do. Um, 
I, I mean, I do a lot of different things. I put myself out there. I mean, it's all about exposure. I go out and I meet people. I tell every single person that I meet what I do. Um, and I take something that I like to call imperfect action. So what I think is that a lot of people sit and they struggle and they actually hyper-analyze every single facet of what they're putting out there to the masses. And instead of hyper-analyzing, I think that it's so important just to take that imperfect action because while you're scrutinizing and analyzing things, somebody else is out there already doing it. So, you know, your process is an evolution. I mean, your marketing is an evolution. Your business is an evolution. So I think it's important to just kind of get out there and take the action and then, you know, evolve with your next steps. Thank you. All right. And now you also have experience, I see here. What other types of real estate experience do you have besides retail sales? Um, I was an office manager. I was an executive assistant for a community association management president. Um, I did long-term luxury leasing in the hammock area um, and did marketing listings and contract administration at several different businesses um, in the community. So just kind of worked my way from the front desk of Hamilton's real estate company and just kind of moved it all the way up until I was sick of pushing somebody else's paper. <laughs> and, and how do you feel that dad's helped you? Um, I think it's helped me because I have a knowledge of every area of the business. I mean, I took um, smaller roles in the beginning and I took, you know, which wound up actually um, you run the office. When you're an office administrator, a front desk receptionist, you're a hub. You learn exactly everything that has to do with real estate. When you're a listing and contract administrator, you learn every single line of those contracts and listings. Um, so. Well, we <laughs> with all the deep restrictive communities here in Palm Coast, it's so important to know about community association management and what that entails, what are the different divisions of that, and you know, um, it really does help with an actual full-time sales career. Awesome. Thank you. Let's give Carrie uh, a shout out. Now, in her, in her bio to me, she also said one thing, and that, and I think this is another theme we're going to see, but she believes that building relationships is the key to success for her. Building relationships. And I claim to be in more agreement with that. So, um, and I'd be remiss if I did not say that uh, Carrie is part of a team, and you are the... The dream team, and so Carrie brings to the table. Oh, oh! I, and I was reading my notes wrong. And the quote I got on building relationships is a key came from Carrie, and that was part of hers. But I think we'll see this theme throughout um, and whatnot. So that's cool. <coughs> Kathy, how are you today? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you're newer to real estate, am I correct? Um, I guess I have to talk into the microphone. Um, yes, I would say overall, yes. Um, my partner, RJ, has a lot more experience than I do. He's been doing this since 2005. Um, I was a trauma nurse in the medical field prior to transitioning over to <coughs> real estate. Excellent. And you've been a real estate agent for five years now? Is that right? Yeah, full time. Awesome. And you're a. the delegation portion prior to that. <laughs> <laughs> Still delegating, I guess, back and forth. And, and so, speaking for the elite team, right? RJ's out showing homes. She knows how to do this. <laughs> so team management here put him out in the rain. Um, so one of the, when we ask what you guys do, what you guys do that makes you different, that, that, that get your business going, makes you successful, is prospecting and follow-ups. So prospecting and follow-ups. Can you elaborate a little bit on what you do, what, it, what that looks like daily? 
Um, I think overall it's important to have a routine that you kind of get situated in. Um, in all honesty, I think from transitioning over from, excuse me, from another real estate company and then transitioning over here, kind of, we're still kind of finding our way. Um, but it's important to, like I said, to have um, a routine. Um, with that, uh, we tend to spend a few hours a day between prospecting um, and then just, of course, on top of that is to, um, to follow up. Um, a lot of stuff gets missed, obviously, and those follow-ups are continuously getting back to those same clients because uh, the majority of the time um, people aren't ready to go right then and there. It's, it's a process. It's a long-term thing. Sometimes people are years out, and you just have to keep up with them. Yeah. I'll start on the top of them. No, that's exactly what I was hoping to hear. So uh, the the uh, the elite team is very brief in their responses to me. Um, when I when I ask them specifically, what do you think contributes to the success of your business? One word. One word. And I like this word, and it's a very profitable word. Any guesses? Follow-up? Relationships, no follow-up, no. Good words. Persistence. No. Consistency. Bingo. <laughs> Consistency. Consistency. And that can be applied into so many different aspects of our career and so many different aspects and and I don't want you guys to think oh man I gotta do all of the things that all ten of these amazing agents are doing or they're doing this and I that's got to be the key I think one you know find things you're good at find things you like to do they will become profitable when you apply consistency you need consistency. If what you like to do is not making you money, refigure out. All right? Figure out how to make money. All right? Do what you like to do. So, um, all right. Excellent. Next on our panel is a young man I, I have gotten to know over the last, how long have you been with us? Six years. Almost six. Yeah. Almost six years Fred's been with us. He came to us as a new agent, uh, fresh off of a professional golf career, and uh, you are a lifelong Flagler resident? Uh, I've been here since I was three. So. Almost. <laughs> Almost. So. so Fred, tell us, um, why do you feel like you are a successful agent? Um, I feel like just, you know, I've been in the area pretty much my whole life. I know a lot of people. And I think just the way I kind of market and keep myself in front of um, my friends and family, people that I know, um, has really kind of uh, accelerated my real estate career. Okay, I like the way you answered it uh, in writing better. I forget. <laughs> I forget what I put. <laughs> what I said. And here's what he said. And I know this about you to be true. And Fred and I have a, a particularly close relationship. He worked for me as a staff member, and then he is currently my neighbor. So I get to, we talk a lot. Um, but I've developed habits that put me in a working state of mind every day. That's true. And that's part of staying in front of, you know, my friends and family. Even when I'm not necessarily in the office working or showing houses or, or I guess, doing work-related activities, real estate-related stuff, in the back of my mind, I'm still working. And when I'm, when I'm speaking to friends and family and people that I know, when I'm out and about, in the back of my mind, I'm trying to just build more relationships with people. And um, so, yeah, definitely. So you're using your friends and family. No, that's not. That's not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really. Okay, I say that in jest because if you haven't had this internal dialogue, you probably haven't pushed the envelope enough. If you haven't said to yourself, Am I using my friends and family here? Am I am I 
crossing a line with this relationship? Am I putting the business first, right? Then you're probably not active enough with your business thoughts and your marketing because it is a relational business. And if we aren't doing business with those people we are most relational with, we're missing the mark. And everybody who's been in the business long enough has had a family member, a close friend, or a neighbor list or sell their property. And that person did it because we weren't on top of things. We weren't on top. So. Exactly. I mean, that's what I was just going to go to next. I mean, we all had somebody that we know list or sell, list or buy a property that didn't use you. And every time I see that, I'm just like, man, how do they not think of me? And I'm like, it's not their fault. It's my fault. You know, I didn't stay in front of them. And um, I just, I don't want to be that person. It's in my friends and family. I want to help them. So. And that's a great point. And, and let's remember, when we sell real estate, when, when our friends don't do us a favor by giving us the, the listing. They don't do us a favor by letting us help them buy a house. We do them a favor. We bring excellence, knowledge, and skill to a decision they've already decided they want to do. They want to buy or sell. We help them do it. And we keep them out of trouble and we get them a good deal. We look out for them. The closer they are to you, the more important it is. So, um, you want to keep that in mind. And Fred also has some very innovative marketing, if you haven't seen it, right? Uh, the, the, the Coors Light bottle on the uh, side of the boat with the kids, and oh my gosh, it's, you know, it's, you know the, the hallmark moments of, uh, of life, you know? So... No. Um, <laughs> now, I also know that Fred stays in constant contact with a group of people. Is that correct? Um, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have a sphere of people that, oh, yeah, you yeah, stay, absolutely. that you are in constant communication with? Yes, yes. And that's honestly where I spend most of my marketing money, I guess you can say, is to my sphere. Once a month, it's the most important thing I do, honestly. Um, I have my CRM, obviously, I use Realty Juggler. And once a month, I send out a monthly, just a little small postcard mailer to everybody that I've come in contact with. And it literally costs me maybe 250 bucks a month. And the response I get back from that is huge. And even if I'm not, you know, talking to somebody on, a, on the phone or you know through social media or whatever, they're getting something from me in the mail that I handwritten out. And, um, and the response I get back from, these, from everybody is, I mean, ridiculous. And probably once a month I get a deal from my sphere. I mean, for 250 bucks a month, it's the most important thing I do. You handwrite them? Well, I handwrite the, um, my wife. Outsourcing. <laughs> Outsourcing. Um, my wife handwrites um, the envelopes and then she addresses them and then I have a little stamp for the return label and then obviously the stamp. And then the actual card itself, the postcard itself, I kind of, and they're, they're really corny. I think that's why I get a response because it, it literally looks like it, you know, it took me five seconds, but it looks like I hand, hand drew it. So I pick like a like a holiday of the month or a special day of the month and I draw like a little cartoon thing and then color it in and then handwrite, you know, happy flag day, your friend Fred, you know, or something like that. And then I stick a business card in there, I send it out. And then <coughs> with that I take I, I draw the card and then I take it down to my print shop and they make me, you know, 200, 250 copies of that. So it looks like I, you know, like I did every one and then stick it in the envelope and send it off. And this and these postcards are the quality you would expect to see of a third grader on the fridge right there. <laughs> my, gra my grandmother I'm calls not joking. Me. My grandmother calls me every month. She goes, Fred, you seriously sent this out to your customers? <laughs> it looks like your daughter wrote on it. <laughs> Got you to call me. <laughs> Excellent. So and that's another thing, just going back to like what Carrie said. I mean, you can sit and try and figure out the perfect mailer every month and try and, you know, make everything perfect, but... Honestly, 
just the realness of your of your marketing and your efforts, I think people appreciate. So when you're not, I mean, just get out and just get stuff out there and don't wait because somebody else is definitely doing it. Mr. Burke, say I want to be on the mailing list. <laughs> 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 on my fridge. Sounds cute. You'll get one next month, then. Uh, all right. <laughs> and deliver. All right. I was here for Fred. We will transition to Peter Larson. I'm sorry, Dave Pilniski. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, saw, I, I just saw the uh, microphone in your hand. I thought we were moving. Okay, Pilniski here. Um, Dave, how long have you been with us now? I don't even know. Probably five, six four, years? five, six years, something like something that. Something like that. So, pre us being in this building, Dave, yep. and I, Dave and I shared an office down in Flyland Beach for a while. That was fun. Um, so, Dave's been 14 years in the business, 14 years, and um, he, he's certainly, these three guys up here have challenged each other for top sales in our office, and one of the commonalities we're going to see here is these three prospect, these three market and network. And they do it, they all do it intentionally. They all have a plan that they use and they all do it intentionally. I would gather to say all three of them would say it could be better. I, I could be more efficient, I could have more help, I could use different programs, but the bottom line is they do it every month and they do it consistently and it pays off. So Dave, you said here that what drives you, what makes you the most as a successful agent is text, email, and <coughs> calling prospects. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about what it looks like in a day to, you know, how does that look? Are you just responding to agent uh, inquiries or what are you doing? Well, I've got a really large database um, that I've built over the last 10 years, I guess. Uh, thousands of people and um, I'm a big believer in automation to make my job easier because there's no way that I'd be able to get in front of all those people you know consistently on my own <clears throat> so I've got a lot of automation set up in my business to reach out and stay in front of those people um, you know every day part of my routine is at least two to four hours of making calls and reaching out to people that are showing consistent, uh, I don't want to say inquiries, but consistently staying, you know, responding to what I'm sending out. Um, so that's a big part is just uh, prospecting every day and then to the masses that I have in my database, setting everything up so it's automated. Great, great. And what's this? With text, with email, um, you know, and, and I have an email system set up for 33 weeks, or 33 months actually, for all of my prospects. So even though I'm not writing these emails, they're, they're getting them. And people that have I haven't talked to for four years sometimes reach out because they're still getting my stuff. So they'll get a <coughs> unique email each month? Absolutely. And so this would be a campaign where you wrote 33 emails or yeah. tweaked 33 emails. They come into your program and then they're launched into that and automatically <coughs> once a month or thereabouts. Yeah, I've got up. like one every, you know, for a, a new prospect that I get, I've got them set up for an email the first day, an email the third day, an email 10 days later, 30 days later, two months, you know, so. It's set up in, uh, and it's and it's been it's a in, it's a campaign that uh, has been tested by um, one of the top agents in the country who has a team that does 400 million a year. Um, so a lot of the things that I do to make my job easier, because obviously I don't have the time to sit here and create all this stuff. Um, I network with some of the top agents in the country and some of the top teams, and you learn what they're doing and you use it. Uh, you don't have to do it on your own. You know, there's people out there in networks that you can join where you copy them and they'll let you. That is a great point. And have you availed yourself of any coaching? 
Yeah, uh, I also did, uh, I did Tom Ferry coaching. It was very expensive, but I did do that for a year. Um, and what that helped me to do was stay accountable to myself and also find out some of my weaknesses and and how to delegate those like like uh, uh, Emily, 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 Emily. That's what you uh, mean, was right? talking about earlier. Uh, delegate the stuff that I'm not good at uh, to to get me over to what I am good at, which is talking to people. Excellent, excellent. And, you know, I love that accountability can create so much change in life. So if you're looking to change anything in your life, whether you want to become more fit, or you want to become more profitable, or um, whatever, if you add an accountability factor into your system, you are going to do better. Um, I have accountability partners I, I, I meet with, and we go over all kinds of stuff. Um, but like in this realm, in sales, accountability can be unbelievably good. Now you need a little bit of direction, right? Because if you don't know what you're being held accountable to, or you don't have the good metrics to measure, then it becomes more difficult. But I will encourage all of you as agents that you can form accountability groups and dramatically increase your sales. So all you have to do is set forth a plan that will work and then hold each other accountable to doing the daily steps. And you got to be honest with yourself too about what you need to be accountable for. Exactly. You know, you can't BS yourself if you know, hey, I'm, I'm not doing this and I should be. You've got, you've got to find a way to, to keep yourself accountable for that. Right. And prospecting, prospecting is a required activity unless you are a well-established agent who lives on referrals. And even then, I think you're doing yourself a disservice if you're not prospecting. At that point, at a minimum, you should be prospecting your referral base. Um, but prospecting, you will not be very successful without consistent prospecting. Consistent. Now, if that is somehow not in your skill set, right? I don't like prospecting. First off, you might want to relearn what prospecting <coughs> is because it's not necessarily knocking on doors and cold calling people who aren't interested. But if you don't like prospecting, use the Emily approach. <clears throat> okay? Find someone to do it for you. I mean, you can buy leads, right? That's prospecting. I think it's like... Now, I will tell you this. Prospecting and closing are the two most valuable skills. Prospecting and closing, those are the two highest paid skills. Right? So everything else you can outsource cheaper. So but if you have but prospecting is required, so if you can't do it, outsource it. Figure it, team up with someone who likes doing it and has bad follow-up. Right? Find out what you're good at. What part do you like? What part of the equation is the one that gets your go juice going? And go with it. David, thank you. Thank you. How many how many contacts do you have in your database? Somewhere around 3,000 to 4,000. Three to 4,000. Three to 4,000. It's a good number. All right, here. So as I <coughs> review their list, you notice I highlight a few things. Peter had a lot to say. He's, he's, <laughs> um, well, in his bio, maybe someone wrote it for you. Maybe the answers. <laughs> yeah. No, I wrote that. Good, Believe it or not. Good job. So, <laughs> so some of Peter's background. Peter come. Peter is a has a bachelor's degree in business administration. So that's a great degree to have in real estate. Understand the generalities of business. 
And then he went to work for Ginn Corporation. And was that your first and only other real estate job? Well, I know you were with uh, the other office, yeah. but yeah, that's, that's where, where you started. started. Yeah. He started at Ginn. I love people who start in timeshare or in a place like Ginn or car salesman, and they get this very classic training, right? And you got some very classical training skills there, right? Yeah, it was a great foundation, it really was. Uh, I started as an assistant there to, uh, to real estate agents uh, as a developer of properties, so a little different from what we're doing here as far as resale. But um, as an assistant, I had to make 80 minimum outbound calls a day on top of emails and things like that. So it kind of desensitized me um, to get on the phone. Uh, I think I'm pretty good at This is awesome. Everybody. This is gold here, guys, right, right now. Well, what we're hearing is gold. Because so many things have just played into what he said. One, he was an, he was an assistant, right? They outsourced this. this. These agents were making too much money, right? And they were. No. No, the agents you were working for weren't making money? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those yeah, are just yeah, water they, yeah. Yeah, they, they were, were killing it. They were killing it. So pay this guy to make 80 phone calls a day for me. I, I, I don't want to make 80 phone calls a day. I want to talk to 6 or 12 that he digs up. And they would, and that, would that be about what they talked to? Yeah, I would say, yeah. Yeah, so, so he would ring, 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 and get the phones, and then he would dig up calls. Now, that's hard work. If you haven't done cold calling, whew, it's hard work. It takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of time. Getting 80 phone calls in is eight hours of your work in the phone. You're not, you're not BSing at the coffee uh, dispenser. You're on the phone. Um, I've done outbound phone calls. I've done this in my career. Um, I've wanted listings in a particular subdivision. I, I, you know, you just, there's times in your career where you need to do this. There's times in your career where you need to say, I need to call everyone in my sphere. And I need to get that done this month. And if I get 250 people, that's 50 calls a week. Now, you don't have to do 80 a day. But believe me, when you try to do 50 calls in one week, you will think you're doing 80 in one day. You'll be like, oh my gosh, this is so much work. Right? But, so... It's productive, and it was outsourced, right? I love it. This is really, and what did you learn from that experience, Peter? Well, I learned, uh, I learned how to deal with people, how to talk to people on the phone. Uh, really, I mean, it was a great foundation for what I'm doing now. Uh, Follow-up's huge. Uh, that's where I got my basis for a CRM, to use for a CRM, which is what I live by now. And uh, every time I talk to somebody, you um, just make the notes, schedule follow-ups based on that. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, this, this is what it used to today. Let, to this let, day. let me I mean, tell you really a is. Peter story, a Peter story that is one that I've probably heard from Peter multiple times, a little bit of a different <coughs> version. The, the story goes something <coughs> like this. Love to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> You'll recognize the story. Yeah, got a listing today. Awesome, Peter, how'd you get that? Oh, I called this guy who I've been calling for four years. <laughs> and the last time I talked to or well, the last time I actually talked to him, he bought a house. He bought with something else. And so I figured he wasn't dad, you know. So I keep calling him and I've been calling him for four years. And today he decided that it's time to list his house. Now, the lead had gone through a cycle originally where most agents would, right? The buyer bought a house. I lost. Peter didn't lose. Peter said, that's inning one. Mm -hmm. Right? Someone else got a base hit. Good for them. Good for them. In the ninth inning, Peter gets the listing. So, but this is by having people in his database so how many people are in your database? I think maybe around 2,000 I have right now. And out of those 2,000, how many would you say are on some kind of call schedule? 
Oh, every one of them. Every one of them. Holy smokes. So Peter has 2,000 people on his call schedule. Oh my gosh. You know, I did some research. And I read this book by Keller, uh, Gary Keller. If you haven't read the book Millionaire Maker, you need to read the book. If you want to understand prospecting uh, to, to a real good degree. Gary Keller says if you reach out to a uh, prospect 33 times, you do a personal touch to this prospect 33 times, um, they will become in your sphere. They will become part of your sales machine, right? And every person that's in that sphere, one out of six will send you something that year. Okay, now that, that sounds very complicated and if you start doing the math, you can just extrapolate how many contacts I need for how many sales I want. And the exciting thing is when you start thinking about it, if you monetize, if you monetize the value of that lead. So let's say, let's just for round numbers, let's just say a, a sale net of $4,000. Can we agree on that? Right. Sale net of $4,000 after closing. You can get a check for $4,000. And one out of six of these people are going to give you a $4,000 check. That is a $700 lead over the, per year, over the life of the lead, if you could manage it at 33 touches a year. Now, 33 touches a year, my friends, is very hard. It's very hard. But, if you took $700 and said, how many $700 do I need in a year, right? Well, I got to support Miss Debbie, so I need a lot of seven hundred dollars. So, so I, pers I personally need like several of those a week, you know, maybe more. I don't know, but so it it doesn't it doesn't matter. Let's say you need three closings a month, right? So you need twelve thousand a month to be comfortable. Okay, then all you have to do is divide that 700 out by that 12,000. That's how we sell you, you know, how many people you need to be networking. Now, that can get all convoluted and we can work through programs to tell you this, but the bottom line is what Peter says is true. What Dave says and what Fred says and what all these people are going to agree with is the more constant you are in contact with people, the more business you're going to make. And does it matter their readiness today? No. Their readiness today will reflect on your short-term income. Your willingness to reach out to them, whether they're ready today or not, will reflect on your long-term success. So you have to look at that as a key component, constantly <laughs> reaching out to your people. One of the things I try to do, and I've been terrible at it, and I'm glad that this meeting is reminding me, is as I drive around town, when I see streets I know I sold something to somebody on, pick up the phone and call them. Just pick up the phone and call them, hey, how you doing? How's that house going? I am a little slow this week because I'm driving between four appointments. <laughs> you got any of your friends looking to buy or sell? Don't forget me. You need any of my business cards, right? We can be bold in asking. So, what else would you want to impart, Peter, if you were to give them one golden nugget of advice? Um, well, something that I always do, and it kind of goes back to what everybody's been saying here, but. I never ever stop contacting a lead unless they tell me to stop contacting. You just have to <laughs> stop. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if they say take me off your list, and you have to do so. But um, I just, yeah, I just never stop contacting them. I mean, I don't care if they've bought before or they 
about for me in the past would ever always follow up with them. I mean, I for, just for example, I had this um, this lady who ended up, who came in as a lead. I stayed in contact with them. They ended up buying actually with Paytas, and she didn't realize she could use me for new construction. So I'm like, okay. Instead of forgetting about it, what I did was I just followed up with them in six six months. Say, hey, how's it going? How do you like your new house? They're like, oh, it's not working out. We're going to sell it. You want to list it? <laughs> so I said, okay, great. Yeah, thanks a lot. I'll list it. So I listed that house, ended up getting both sides on it. The people who bought it from me have now referred me to two other people. One I closed yesterday, and the other house in Hidden Lake that we had on Caravan was a referral from those people, which is now under contract. Yeah. All that from that one person who told me they bought, and instead of just me dropping and forgetting about them, I'll follow it up with them, just say, hey, how's it going? How do you like your house? How many deals is that off of one guy who told me they had bought it? Guys, this is Tom Perry Square. This is the real stuff here because we can go we can go to Tom Ferry or any other and I'm not saying anything wrong with them. They're great at what they do and what they teach you. Is good. Use it you have to use it. What we're what we're showing you here right now today is what people are doing. Right? We're not showing you the we're not talking about what is, oh, it's possible and no one really lives in that reality, right? Because sometimes I see these great speakers and these great motivational speeches and I get, oh, and then reality gets in, right? And then my kids are sick and uh, my bike has a flat tire and you know, whatever problems in life arise. Um, these guys are really doing it and this is you know, great examples. Thanks. I just yeah. want to say one thing that I like what Peter said, I think that kind of built on what the success he's continued to have is he started out saying the 80 calls a day desensitized him. Mm -hmm. And that, that's why he's been able to press even when they may have chosen somebody else, he didn't drop that person because of feeling offended or forgotten or anything. Yeah. That, so I wanted to <laughs> say something about yeah, let that. Me, let me, like let me talk said. for one minute about cold calling. Yeah. Well, I'm calling it cold calling, but it's not. Okay, calling into our database, right, which should be warm calling or hot calling or whatever, but calling into our database. When we have to do that, when we have a list of people, and we're sitting at our desk or at home or at Starbucks, wherever we decide to do this, it's a very daunting task. And when you first pick up the phone to call, trust me, your first phone call, you're going to say, was a miserable failure, right? I stumbled over my words. I, 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 I didn't really know what to say. I, I stuttered a lot. All of that. That's normal, right? The second phone call will improve. The third one, you'll start understanding what you got to work on. Trust me. You'll get to about 10 phone calls before you find a rhythm. Now, after you've done it more and more, the rhythm comes quicker and easier. But at first, it will be the same way every time. You take you 10 phone calls. Now, if you're not willing to embarrass yourself 10 times, it won't work. Yeah, that's a good point. I. Uh... Sometimes you know, some days I'll wake up and like doing my two to four hour prospecting, making calls. I will. It'll take me a few calls to get in that right rhythm. Whether it's leaving a voicemail or actually talking to somebody and getting that flow going, so that it becomes like like butter, like it just comes out <coughs> smooth. And um, that's that's a really important point. My wife has actually been at the house while I'm doing this <coughs> and mentioned that, wow, that was really good, like, you know, when I first met her, she was like, whoa, and, um, but yeah, there's some days where I'm just off, and it could be my mood, it could be lack of sleep, or stress, or whatever, but you've got to keep going, and just work through it. One of the things I find is, the more we remind ourselves that we are here to provide value to the person we're calling, the more we believe in ourselves as we call them, the better we'll do. We're not calling them to beg favors. We're calling them to offer advice and solutions. And so reminding ourselves of that, that we're doing them the favor, 
right? We are helping them. It's very instrumental to making your calls more successful. Well, and to maybe back off of that, I think that um, calling and things like that is a numbers game. I mean, it's the same Absolutely thing as a numbers game. And so you're going to hear the word no a lot. And if you hear the word no a lot, if you keep the mindset that you need a certain amount of no's in order to get to the yes. And so knowing that that no is just getting you closer to that yes that you're going to hear. You know, because you know that out of every uh, 60 phone calls, one person will say yes. You know, so if you're like, okay, call number 55, I'm only five away from my yes, you know. Exactly and it kind of keeps you in that mindset <coughs> of thinking, you know, it's an abundance. It's just having that positive mindset. And then I'm also going to remind you guys of something else. And yes, no. We need a lot of no's, but we need to re have a new epiphany. We need an epiphany, a whole new mindset on what no is. Not right now. No is not right no now. No is not now. <laughs> no is not now. So it's not no is not no. No is not yet. And with that mindset, it's not so bad. When we realize, oh, okay, they're not ready yet, great, All right, you're on my list, I'm going to check in with you in a couple weeks or a couple months or whatever it is, right? And don't promise something, if you say I'm going to check in with you in a couple weeks, you better write that down in your calendar and check back with, in with them. Um, I recommend not saying that unless you're really good at what you do. Because because as soon as you over-promise, under-deliver, <coughs> That, that's, you know, and when people fail me on small things, I don't trust them on big things. Right? So they, they judge us the same way. So be careful with that. All right, Jeanette. We are getting down here towards this end of the table. <laughs> the older. The, the, the experienced end. The, you know, um, and so we're going to shift away a little bit, if you guys don't mind, from technology and from prospecting and uh, that kind of stuff. And I'd like to focus a little bit at the end on relationships, nurturing relationships, and um, working with referrals and working with past clients and how we stay on top of that. Um, and Jeanette, when I went through her responses and her bio, it reeked of authenticity. And she in capital in capital letters, said, and I love what I do. I love what I do. Um, my clients like me, and I like them. I do so much for them. Oh, she does so much for her clients that her husband gets irritated with her. Yes, he does. <laughs> okay? And when, when I read these remarks, I was like, yeah, that, that's Jeanette. That, that's what makes her such a special part of our team and one of the things I love about you is that comes through and and has anyone in here ever not seen her looking perfect and smiling? Nope. <laughs> right? Even in the rain her hair still looks good. <laughs> you know, she, she is ready to work every day. When she comes in, I always see her looking brilliant and smiling, with a big smile, so that's awesome. So tell me, how do you how do you foster these relationships with your clients? Um, really, it's it's developing a relationship with them as a person, as a human, getting to know them, their families, um, and you know the same as everybody else here. I mean, I, I call them, I stay in contact, I send them cards for whatever's going on in their lives, um, and I try to to keep the human part of it. I do emails and texting and all that too, but. I feel like we have to go back to, to calling people and writing out a little card. And 
I always get calls back, oh, thank you for this, or thank you for the card. Whatever it is, somebody adopted a kid, they're getting a card, you know. So I always stay in contact with them. And um, even like when I call them periodically, I try to make a phone call every day, at least for somebody that I've worked with, um, just to say hi. It's not always like, hey, you ready to sell your house? Um, just to have a conversation with them. They know, you know, it'll always go back to real estate. They'll take it to real estate. You don't have to. And I think with people that I know, they know that, or they feel like I'm the authority when it comes to real estate. So they, I get referrals constantly from people that I've worked with. And I think that's why it's hard. We have to, it's not just selling them a house and saying, bye, see you later. It's developing a relationship because, like Peter said, one person can send you four or five, and that person can send you more and more. So developing these relationships with people is, is really, really important. Is it always the person you expect that sends you the referrals? Uh, you no. Know, read on that? No, not always, no. All right. No, it's always, you know, surprise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's yeah. why we need to treat everybody as if they are going to send us four referrals. Because you don't really know. Mm -hmm. And uh, once I... Um, had a referral from somebody and they referred me this guy and this guy he couldn't buy anything in the next 10 years if he worked hard at it right you know um, so and I, I processed this referral I'm like oh my gosh that's never going to amount to anything and I sent a thank you to my brother who sent the sent me the referral. He's like, "Oh, I'm sorry." I'm like, I mentioned to him, "No, I'm not going to be showing him homes because he can't buy anything." And, and my brother apologized to me. I'm like, "No, you did the right thing. I want you to send me everybody. I'll work. It. I'll figure it out. And if 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 it doesn't if it's not profitable, that's it doesn't matter. I appreciate it. I appreciate the leads." He's like, oh, okay. Six months later, there's a guy who couldn't afford anything, sent me like a $700,000 deal. His uncle could had a house. It actually, it was a commercial building, and I sold the commercial building. And, but that just goes to, you know, you don't, we don't value people for what they can do for us today. Right? If we just value people, and, and then it will pay off. Thank you, Jeanette. You're welcome. We are really getting far down this table. We are almost to me. I just feel all this today. Feel all this today. So, Rosemary, you, how long have you been in real estate? Since 1981. Does anyone in the room? Does anyone in the room that in real estate longer? Look at that! That's awesome. What a what a bunch of You guys are awesome. So 37 years. I was just a youngster when you started real estate, and um, that's awesome. One of the things I noticed in what she responded, I take an hour every day to make calls to people. I take an hour every day to make calls to people. This is a great habit. And what I'm seeing in there is a habit. I have something I do that every day I'm going to go and make my phone calls, make my phone calls. So do you find you get a lot of your business from that? I do. I also have an invisible partner, which is my husband. He does a lot of my marketing. He does things from home. So he does a lot of the paperwork. He does the things that you basically can't see. I sort of outsource it to him. But with the calls, I do them mostly myself. I'll come in and I'll go over things that I have to do, people that I have to call. And then when I'm done with that, what I do, is, which I think is important, is every time I have a closing, I take the HUD statement and I put it in an envelope separately. And then Maybe I'll do 20 deals this year or 30 deals, whatever it is. And at the end of the year, I put them in a folder for that year. And I buy calendars, and I send calendars out to people, but I get the addresses from the HUD statements because they're right there. It's a small piece of paper. It's not very big to keep it, to maintain it. 
And that's basically my, uh, my list of sending things out to people. Tom does by, if we uh, list something, he'll send something out just listed. If we sell something, he sends the, so many out, maybe 200 or 250, you know, just sold. And so we get calls from basically that area, but I, um, I've been in real estate for a lot of years, and I think the most important thing is to be positive. You know, sometimes people, they have a bad day, but when you answer the phone, if you have a smile on your face, it comes through the phone. If you talk to people somewhere and, and, and they're grouchy, I mean, you can, you can tell a person their attitude <laughs> when, you, when you talk on the phone. So I try to be positive, and I try to turn things around. If something isn't positive, uh, like you were saying before about uh, different ones, sometimes you'll take them out and you'll spend time with them and they'll call you and say, I just walked into this house and I can't believe it, it was beautiful and I bought it. You know, maybe they walk into an open house or to a, a, a builder's and, and so, you know, I tell them, look, don't worry about it, you know, it's okay. And I'll even go by and I'll bring them a little present for the house. And so that keeps them there, and then I follow up with them later on and talk to them, and eventually if they do sell it, you know, I usually get the listing. That is awesome. Thank you, Rose Marie. It's been a great part of the team. How long have you been with the Exchange? I've been here, uh, it'll be two years in October. Two years in October. Yay, Rose Marie. <laughs> and thank you, George. <laughs> Our, our newest uh, addition, at least here today, um, to the company and someone I've admired for a while, George Whalen. Uh, I, I loved when I pulled out from his, so he's a lifetime agent, and I think that does say something. He, he's got a lifetime focus on his business. Um, attention to product knowledge, as a builder, a, a licensed builder, I'm sure that's important. And he has dedicated follow through with patience. All of that, and he likes long walks on the beach. So, <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody supposes for a long walk on the beach, we have Mr. Wheeler. So, George, what would you say was the one factor that led to your success here in Tiger County? Well, I mean, uh, <clears throat> I love this area, and I think that, that my appreciation for this area comes through. Uh, now, I'm from New Jersey. I had a long life and career in New Jersey, but, you know, we just didn't have, you know, when I was, throughout my life, <clears throat> we used to travel to, from New Jersey to Florida for, for the weather. And I remember saying you always that I only wish I could have gotten to Florida before they ruined it, before they built nothing but high-rises and tattoo parlors and ice cream stands on every, every inch of the beach. <clears throat> and I thought it was over for me. And finally one day my brother was living down in St. Augustine and St. Augustine Beach. And I came down to visit him. <clears throat> we went down to Meslin and Pizza for a pizza pie and we came out, got to the top of the Dunes Bridge and I took a look at the intercoastal. I could see the Happy Dunes condominiums. I could see the woods. And uh, we, I, instead of turning left and get on 818 to go back up, we, we went straight. And I do this with my clients, and I explain this to my clients. <clears throat> Got to the end of 16th Street, took the right-hand turn, I mean, saw this apparition, which was the, the, the Hammond Beach Resort, went to the beach, and the beach was beautiful. We didn't have to pay to park. I mean, I'll tell you, in New Jersey, where I came from, Monmouth County, to go to the beach, you joined the beach club or you couldn't park. I mean, you literally couldn't park in the mud or you'd be in a place where they tow your car away. Where I lived, to join a beach club, they wanted 10000 for a locker. They finally broke it down to four families. So it cost me $2,500 to have a locker, a shared locker, to be able to park my car. And if I didn't get there by 10 o'clock, on a Sunday, on a sunny day, it might be too late to be in the parking space anyhow. So when I saw the beauty of Monmouth County, of, I mean of Flatter County versus Monmouth County, and our prices and, and the open spaces, lack of traffic, the woods, the parks and everything, I, I just I just said, this is it, and made a decision to move down here, which I've never regretted. But one of the things that, you know, 
I talked a little bit about product knowledge, and I think that <clears throat> I think that's an important part of the business. You know, I, I was coming from an area, so I didn't really know this area. <clears throat> so, you know, unlike a lot of agents, I, and I explained this to a few people that I talked to, I think it's very really important to go out and preview houses. I think that this office does something that offices in New Jersey do <clears throat> with your caravans that nobody seems to do down here. And that is to go out and learn the real estate. So, you know, I got my job way back in a long time ago. The first day I went there, I dressed up in the Northeast. We still realtors dressed like Wall Street bankers, for God's sakes. Mm -hmm. So I had a navy blue three-piece suit on, sat in the office all day. Nobody came in. So the next morning when the broker showed up, I said, well, I'm all ready. I got my license. I'm ready. I mean, you know, what do I do? He said, well, get to know the product. He said, become an expert. So that you have confidence when people come in, and you can... You don't look like you're just learning this stuff. In other words, pick out some houses that, looking at the listings, you think are good values. Know how to get to them. If the owner's there, the, you talk to them. The he said, when somebody stops in, you're going to have a game plan. And I follow that down here, and I still go out and look at houses. Oh One of the yes, ways I work with my clients is if, it, if I get a referral from <clears throat> Atlanta, Georgia, and <clears throat> you know, maybe I haven't met them yet. And we talked on the phone, and we, they said, I'll tell them, I'll send the listings to look interesting. I will go and preview every single solitary one of those listings. And I will feed back to them. So that people feel that I'm important to them, I'm working for them. So if you build that type of thing, you're not going to switch to another agent. It's not going to do that. In other words, if, if that person is going to transfer in, and you are the top of your game on product knowledge, you're going to keep that customer until they buy. Exactly. Those are my words of wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. George, thank you. Okay. Now, uh, can we give our entire panel? <laughs> <laughs> thank you.